I hope we can collimate the telescope that's in this box. Look at that. This is an AstroScan telescope made by Edmund Scientific sometime between 1976 and 2013. And this one only cost me 70 bucks on eBay. Welcome back to the Astronomy Garage. Now, if you know what this is, then congratulations, you're, you're as old as I am, probably. Now, before ending production in 2013, Edmund Scientific was rumored to have made over 90,000 of these little telescopes, starting way back in 1976. Now, don't let the fun color fool you. This sports a four and an eighth inch parabolic mirror. So, in a way, this actually works better than it really ever needed to. And if you didn't see the interview I did with one of the designers of the AstroScan, uh, Norm Sperling, I'll put a link down in the description box. Spoiler alert, he's got a really fascinating story, and I recommend you catch that video. Now, the reason I got this one so cheap is because, well, this is all it came with. Uh, it didn't come with the dust cover. It didn't come with any eyepieces. It didn't come with any knobs. And it didn't come with a base. Now, I happen to have a spare base, so that's not really much of a problem. And even if I didn't have this base right here, that's okay too, because these were designed to fit into your lap so that you could use them while you're sitting down in a chair or even on the ground. You can also use a roll of tape. If you're enjoying this video, please boop that like button and subscribe. It means the world to little channels like this one. There is one big problem with this particular AstroScan, and that is that the front secondary mirror needs collimated. I know collimation can be a scary word, but that just means that it is out of alignment. On a traditional reflector telescope, there are three adjustment screws on the front, there are three adjustment screws on the back, and you use those to collimate the entire telescope. However, during production of the AstroScan to save money, everything was locked in place, so in theory, you can't really collimate these. Now, back in the day, if it arrived from the factory and the uh, optics were all misaligned, you would send it back to the factory and they would fix it and send it back to you. But of course, these days, there is no factory to send it to. So that means we have to collimate it here. And I have to say, I know there's a reluctance out there of folks that won't buy these because they figure there's a 50-50 chance that when it arrives, the mirrors will be all misaligned and then you'll just have to throw it in the trash. Well. Please don't do that. I promise that for most of these telescopes, you can collimate them or at least get them very close to a good collimation. In this video, we will collimate the front secondary mirror and in a few follow-on videos, I'm gonna show you pretty much how you can restore these. But I promise you that here on the Astronomy Garage, we will collimate. Before we mess with anything, let me show you the collimation that we're starting with. This is a collimation cap, and we put this in here, and let's take a look at that view. Note that the image is tilted to the side and probably needs to be tilted forward too. This could be a challenge, but I think we can do this. So let's zoom in and take a look at the actual hardware. On the inside is this steel ring. Do you see that right there? That steel ring holds this glass plate in place and right in here on the other side of the glass is the secondary mirror so we have to pull this whole glass plate out and so the first thing we have to do is get that ring out and this is where you either get lucky or very unlucky for my next trick during one phase of the astroscan production run uh, some of these rings actually came with a little hole and can you see that little hole there's one on each end of the spring if yours has holes, then you're very, very lucky because that means you could use one of these spring pullers. I got this from Harbor Freight or Northern Tool, one of those places. You put this on there and you just squeeze it, yoink, and you pull it out of the telescope. The ones I use are these really old. These are like 100 years old. I think these, I bought these from a tired electrician. These work really good. Either one works, but unfortunately, if you're not lucky, then you'll get an AstroScan whose ring has no holes whatsoever. And then uh, instead of taking, you know, 10 seconds with one of these, it's going to take you uh, 20 minutes probably. 
to longer than that. What you do is you either get a screwdriver or you use your fingers and you have to pry one end out and then pull it out and work your way around until you get the whole thing out. And you have to be very careful. This is the point at which you can shatter that glass at the front. Make sure you wear eye protection when you're trying this. Now, when you get yours out, uh, you may be tempted to drill holes in it so that you can use one of these convenient tools. And I can tell you from experience, I tried and tried and I could not get any drill bit to go through this, even really hardened drill bits. I guess the spring steel that they use in these is basically like uh, impossible, like granite. I don't know. I, I couldn't get it to go through it. What I was able to get it to do, I used a cutoff tool and a dremel and I cut these basically slots. I didn't go all the way through, obviously, otherwise I'd chop it off. I went about halfway through, and then that allows the ends of my spring puller here to grab it and, you know, and pull it together. One thing to keep in mind, every AstroScan telescope has two rings. One is smaller than the other. The big ring holds the secondary mirror glass plate in place and the little ring holds the primary mirror in place. Now, you have to reach into the telescope to get to this one, and I'll just tell you, getting this one off the primary mirror is pretty tricky. I'll save that for another video. So now that we've removed the spring retaining clip from the front, we can remove this glass disc. But before we do that, I want to point something out. I mentioned that when these came from the factory, everything was locked in place, and I wasn't kidding. There's actually a key and a notch down here that prevents this from rotating for the most part. There is some play. Let me show this to you real quick. Can you see that right there? There's actually an indention cut out of the glass and there's a plastic pin that comes up from the side of the telescope. It keeps this whole plate from rotating left and right. There is some movement back and forth on that little keyed notch. So all you do really is you make sure it's you know well supported and you put your fingers on it, okay, turn it upside down, and it should just fall out. If it doesn't fall out, just gently tap it. Oh. And there you go. Here it is. It's just a pretty thick glass. Uh, it's, tra it's totally transparent. It doesn't do any correction like on a Schmidt Cassegrain or a uh, Max Top Cascade, doesn't know anything. That, here's the notch that becomes very important to us. Uh, that's how the factory locked this in place to keep it from rotating. And you can see it's just, it's just a standard secondary mirror, just the ellipse, look at that. And it's been glued in place. So everything's been glued. Um, I don't know what this hole is, but I assume that they had some kind of alignment jig at the factory, because that is lined up with this notch. As I mentioned before, there are two spring retainer rings in every Astro Scan. The smaller one holds the primary mirror in the bottom of the ball. Now that mirror is somewhat special. Let me show you one. It has foam on the back. Here it is. This is the four and an eighth inch mirror. Right? Oops, sorry, that's bright. It has this foam on the back. It's very spongy. Now that foam pushes this mirror up against the spring retainer clip and in theory keeps everything collimated. It keeps it pointing straight down the axis of the telescope. As you might imagine, as the years go on, this foam gets old and it deteriorates and it loses its springiness. And that is one of the things you might have to service on your telescope. And you can test for it really easy. You just take your telescope and you shake it up and down like this. And if you hear a clunking sound coming from down here, that means that the foam has probably deteriorated and you probably won't get any views at all or they'll be just really bad. So I will dedicate a whole video to talking about the primary mirror and issues with it. And when I'm done with that video, I'll put a link down in the description box. But this one sounds pretty good. I don't hear a clunk. And actually that mirror is pristine. It looks really good. So I think we got lucky with this one. And all we're gonna have to do is collimate that front secondary mirror. So I put the glass back in and I mentioned this notch down here earlier. Uh, this is the one that they use to guarantee alignment in the factory, but I also mentioned that there is a little bit of slop. Let me see if I can show this to you. Now you see, I can move it that way. It's basically plus or minus, what's that, a degree? And I'm very curious to see if that's enough to fix at least the side-to-side -side collimation that we have to fix. So let's take a look at the collimation while I slide this back and forth. Wow, that's a lot of fingerprints on there. I'm going to have to clean that before I'm all done. It needs to go to the side. I'll show the arrow here. 
that's the first adjustment that we have to do. You can see the collimation cap circle in there. I'm going to mess with that little notch movement and see if that's enough to fix it. Oh, look at that. That's, that's almost, actually it went too far. Let's try to ease it back a little bit. That's actually really close. What I've learned is that we have enough adjustment to fix the side to side. It still needs to tilt forward. So I should mention, uh, we got lucky because there was enough slop in that little keyway to allow us to rotate this a little bit. If you needed to go further, there is something you could do. You could take a Dremel tool and you could grind off that little plastic nub that sticks up. It's just plastic. And then you could really rotate this as much as you needed to. All right, so the current situation is we've, we've got it side to side collimated, but it needs to come tilting back like that, right? I'm exaggerating, but it needs to tilt back. So how do we do that? Well, this sits against a lip that runs all the way around. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take little pieces of painter's tape like this, and we're gonna put painter's tape there and there. You have to use two or else it'll rock. So we're gonna put a piece of painter's tape there and there we'll build it up in layers until we get the proper tilt now hopefully there's still enough room for the retainer spring clip to go in that retainer spring is pretty strong so i think it'll hold it in there but let's get started on that here goes the first piece of tape i'll put it right there i'll put one right there i'll put the glass back in Key in there okay it's all keyed in let's take a look through the collimation cap and see what it looks like that's actually pretty close again i apologize for all the fingerprints i'll clean it before i put it all back together so two more pieces of tape all right i'll put the glass back in and there we go we have a perfect collimation i have to admit i ended up using five layers of painter's tape but that did the trick. It actually looks pretty good, and I'm pretty excited about this. I'm going to clean all those fingerprints off and then take this outside and test it on the moon. After cleaning the glass, I carefully reinserted it back into the front of the Astro Scan, and then I double checked the side to side placement before carefully reinserting that spring retainer clip. Uh, note that I checked the collimation every step of the way. There it is all cleaned up. Now, one word of caution, if you used a lot of tape to get that tilted out, to get it collimated, make sure that the spring retainer clip is seating properly. The last thing you want is for the spring to not seat properly. And then while you're using the Astro Scan, have that front glass fall out. You don't want that. Just be very, very careful. To aim the Astro Scan, I borrowed one of the stamped sheet metal aiming guides from one of the other Astro Scans that I have. They work okay in a pinch. This is using the standard 28 millimeter RKE eyepiece. And if you zoom in on my phone, it looks a little bit bigger. If you haven't figured it out, I really do love the AstroScan telescope. They are a ton of fun, and if you have little kids, they're going to love these too. Despite the rumor that you cannot collimate an AstroScan, I hope that this video helps set your mind at ease at least a little bit. They made 90,000 of these, so they're always coming up for sale on the used marketplaces. And don't worry, if you miss one on eBay, just wait until the next day and another one's going to show up, probably even cheaper than the one that you let get away. I've heard of people buying these at yard sales for 30 bucks. But generally speaking, online, you'll find them for about uh, $70 for this bare bones model, up to about $200. It just depends on how complete the setup is. You'll pay a little bit more if it comes with an RKE eyepiece. You'll pay a whole lot more if it comes with a complete set of RKE eyepieces, especially if it comes with the Barlow lens. This is the first in a series of videos that I'm doing on how to fix and optimize your AstroScan telescope. As I complete each of them, I'll put a link down in the description box below. And speaking of historical telescopes, if you've never heard the wild story behind the infamous Bird Jones telescope, then you've got to check out this documentary right here. Thanks for watching and clear skies, everybody. For more information, check out Gary Saranek's wonderful AstroScan website. I'll post the link below.